Hi everyone, Dr. Arland Hill out at Harvest Hills Ranch and today I've got a video for you that's a little bit of a deviation from the normal of what we do. You guys know as you watch our videos we're normally talking about food, nutrition, uh, health related topics. We're showing you things out here on the farm and, and how we do things, how we run our animals, how we grow food, whatnot. Trying to share that information, but today's gonna to be a little bit different. We've been sharing some videos of us working through hay season. And one of the questions that we've been getting is, what is that implement? What is that thing you're pulling behind the tractor that you keep talking about? You keep talking about this drum mower and what, what's that thing do? What is it all about? And so I, I wanted to shoot this video and answer some of those questions for you and maybe for maybe for some of the guys out there appeal to some of the mechanical side some of the equipment side um, that we get interested in it from time to time but what I really wanted to do with this is also not just share answers to what we're doing out here and what this piece of equipment is but I also wanted to on the other side help other producers like myself guys that are farming or looking to try to manage their hay and don't have huge needs we're not in the hay business but we still need hay and we need clean sources of hay maybe where this more fits in as an option for them as well so we're going to try to tackle both pieces in this video so let's start out by taking a look let me give you an overview of the more to begin with the more you're looking at here is a Samaz z 10 slash 2h this is the biggest more in the Samaz line it's uh it's going to be a 2.1 meter cut width on this which for us in the states that are more accustomed to feet and inches that's a six foot eleven inch cut on this um, this is the biggest drum more they make um, and so we're, we're going to talk about that because there's some relevance to the size on this but let me talk about some of the basic functions for some of those that may not be familiar with this type of implement so let's talk about the power source and we'll kind of kind of work from the tractor back around to the moor so the first thing is is that i'll show you in a moment these moors have have uh, blades that have to turn and the power source for those blades is coming from right there that is called the power takeoff shaft <clears throat> and that power takeoff shaft which the shaft itself is right there runs right back to the moor and so what it's going to do is provide the continual power source to the moor to spin the blades so you can see it coming in right here it comes back to a set of belts and then those belts run over to a gearbox that is going to be found up here and then that transfers into the drums that are underneath the moor so what I'd like to do is show you those drums because this is really those drums are the business end of this moor so let me take a look under here with you and show you what these look like and talk about how they function so under the moor here you're gonna notice you've got these two drums so we've got one right here we have another on this side and you'll see that there are there's knives on there. So those knives, there's four on each one of those drums and they skid across the ground. And what they do is those two drums spin opposite of each other. So literally they begin to throw the grass that they're cutting right into right in between them. And that forms a nice row that lays the grass over in in behind the moor. Now there's a pro and con to this. If you Depending on your grass, it may not dry fast enough. I'm working predominantly with Bahia grasses, so I don't have much of an issue with that. It dries down usually in the Texas sun in a day without a lot of problem at all. Um, so that's that's one of the, you know, just kind of one of the things you have to consider on this. Let me talk about some of the things about the more specifically, try to answer some of the questions that I had that I was not able to easily get answers to that may be of benefit to other producers. So one of the things that you want to know if you're going to make an investment like this is what is the what is the quality that you're buying so one of the easy ways to get an assessment on that is just look at how thick the steel is. So trying to give you an image here a glimpse of how thick that is you'll notice on this crossbar right here I mean that's that's a pretty thick piece of steel um, and, and in regards to the other pieces of steel on here for example like the frame right here this tube iron this is going to be of equal thickness to that in fact 
Um, you can fill down here. It's it's all the same thickness under there. Uh, those lift arms where that's attached in, there's some nice conveniences on that. If you need to adjust those um, pins in and out to lift that uh, lift arm, you can easily do that through this bolt. There's several slots in that pin that allow you to adjust that in and out. Um, so I, I think in terms of the, the construction on this, the quality of the metal, you've got good quality metal here. You can see that carried over into these lift um, these lift hooks or where the lift hooks would fit in right here if you need to hook a chain or, or lift a uh, strap to that. Um, that was a, a real convenience when we were trying to get it off the trailer. I know with my disc more in the past, we didn't have that luxury. So that made it, this made it much more convenient. Um, one of the complaints that I did find uh, alluded to with this more were the hydraulics. Uh, some would say that these hydraulic, uh, um, the, these hydraulic cylinders were just small comparatively. I, I can't say that I agree with that. I, I think that that hydraulic cylinder is as big as the one that we had on our previous disc more. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know that that's a real concern there. Uh, sheet metal, I mean, it's, it's not, paper thin, but it, it's still sheet metal, but I think it's going to be every bit durable as we need it to be. Um, one of the questions I had when I bought this more, this is obviously from a Polish company. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to know that I was going to be able to get replacement parts for this more and that it was going to be something that if, if I needed to repair something, I could get that. I talked to multiple dealers uh, about that issue and it didn't seem to be a problem. There was going to, uh, they were going to be able to provide me with parts as I needed them. And predominantly, honestly, these are not complicated mowers. So the only thing you're probably gonna really need are the blades themselves to keep this thing going. Um, one thing that you'll see on here, this was on, if you ever look at the company video on these mowers, you'll see these pins right here. You can just undo this pin, you can slide this off, and that'll allow you to spin the mower back so you can put it in the transport position and carry it directly behind the tractor. It does come up with the hydraulic system, regardless of whether it's in the cutting position or, uh, or whether it's in the transport position, either way. So you can spin the mower around if you need to. Uh, a couple of other safety features in here. You got a pretty, pretty robust safety chain. Uh, that comes in. I just run that through the pinhole right under the uh, top link uh, attachment, so that fits in there. Um, we tie that off. I was finding that if I didn't tie this off, it was predominantly it would just keep banging against the shield for the PTO. So I wanted to get that up and away from the PTO shaft and not let that consistently bang. Uh, one of the things I will tell you about this mower, um, I'm running this uh, this mower. Uh, you can see the tractor that I'm running this on. This is a 120 horse case. Uh, I do also have a 55 horse John Deere and I, the John Deere would likely spin the drums and has enough PTO horsepower to turn those drums, but it just does not have the weight to handle this more. Um, the, the case doesn't have any issue with the more it's plenty plenty stable but i would not put that more behind the behind the john deere i uh, just don't think that would be a fun ride in terms of cutting performance with this it does a nice job of cutting the the comment that you if you're looking into drum mowers that you've probably heard about you can cut as fast as you can stay in the seat i would say that that is certainly an accurate comment with this more i cut in uh second range third gear i cannot cut in second range uh fourth gear I typically cut around four miles an hour, six miles an hour, at least in my pastures, is not a fun experience. So I try to uh, keep it a little slower than that. Hey, hopefully you found this information interesting. If you're uh, if you're just kind of having some questions about what is that drum mower you guys keep talking about? Hopefully we were able to provide you a little insight into what this thing does and how it functions. If you're on the producer side, hopefully this was able to answer some questions for you that you maybe haven't been able to find elsewhere. Um, you know, it was always a challenge finding some information. I had to go go to the dealer and just look for myself firsthand, and then we decided to go this direction. It made more sense for us. The investment was nowhere near as big on this as it would have been for a Dismore, and with me not being in the hay business, this was a better route for us. So, hey, I appreciate you taking the time to listen. If you like the information, hit it with a thumbs up. If you think it can be beneficial to someone else out there, let them know about it as well and uh, share this information. Hey, thanks for listening again, guys. I'm Dr. Arlen Hill out at Harvest Hills Ranch, and we'll talk with you real soon. Take care.